Hey, good morning. Uh, this is Pastor Pastor Harvey Beck at uh, Lester Memorial United Methodist Church for joining us for the first time. But anyway, I do a Wednesday devotion and started it back way back in COVID and didn't think it would last but a little bit of time. But here we go, a uh, year or so later, and uh, we're glad you joined us. Let me share with you a couple of announcements regarding our church. And perhaps if you live in the area, you may want to come as well. We're having a special candlelight and Christmas communion service. Uh, this coming Friday, December the 24th. This year, we're going to have two services. First one is at 4 o'clock. The second one is at 6 o'clock. So you can come to either one of those services at 4 o'clock and at 6 o'clock. The church has been doing this for a long time. Many churches have Christmas Eve communion and candlelight service. So uh, if you want to come and be a part of that, you certainly can. Both of those services will be in our sanctuary. We invite you to come and be a part of that. Also, to remind our folks that, or if you happen to visit with us this coming Sunday on the 26th, we're only going to have one service. We, we usually do right in between uh, New Year's and Christmas. We just have a combined worship service. It will be at 10 o'clock. So we won't have an 8, 30, and 11. So if you show up at 11 o'clock, we'll be getting through. So 10 o'clock, December the 26th, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Please pass the word around, or if you hear somebody saying, hey, I might come visit y'all's church, we'll tell them on the 26th to come at 10 o'clock, and we will be in the upper room, which is the worship center that we just built this past year. So upper room is where we'll have our worship service this coming Sunday, December the 26th at 10 o'clock. So please get that word around. I want to share with you, you see two different plants I've got behind me, and I'm going to let you get a close-up look of them. Some of you may be familiar with these. This is called an amaryllis. Now the light quality is not that, that good, but this one is a little more reddish and pinkish. They come in different, different colors. And uh, I wanna thank Mary Jim Botcher. She uh, got, gave this to us. And then we received another one that actually came from Mary Jim's daughter, Jane Ann. And uh, this one, you can tell a little more that it's more pink and the other one, but they're beautiful. And uh, I'll just mention to you that you know in the Bible that it talks a lot about plants and agriculture and uh, talks a lot about seed time, seed and harvest. And I've done devotions on that before, but many illustrations to give a deeper spiritual understanding are used with the understanding of seed being planted in the soil. And by the way, these do come from a bulb, bulb. One of them comes from South Africa, actually. But the bulb originates from a seed. Now, I didn't know that unless I looked it up. But they do come from a seed. Even the bulb does. And so God created that way. We know in Genesis, God said, as long as this earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. So spiritually, we understand that too. God's word is a seed it tells us in Matthew 13 that it can be planted into the heart. And so powerful illustration. So thank you for that, the Christmas amaryllis. And uh, the other thing that is a, a simple, a very simple yet very profound theological understanding in Scripture in used Old Testament, New Testament. I'm going to read to you two scriptures about light. Light and the ability to dispel darkness. And so I'm going to give you two passages of scripture. I'm actually going to use these in the devotion on Christmas Eve at four o'clock and at six o'clock service. And I'm going to use these two passages of scripture and just talk about the powerful illustration that Jesus gives us about light and pushing away darkness. So here are the two passages of scripture. Isaiah 9, 2. Many prophecies were given from Isaiah about Jesus' birth and also Holy Week, the week of his death. This, this comes from Isaiah 9 too. It's not a part of the, the prophecies that were given, but just remind you, Isaiah spoke 700 years before Jesus came at Christmas. So some of the prophecies do fulfill that. Now here we are 2,000, so 2,700 years, give or take, from that time. But these simple illustrations, Go beyond time and speak to every generation. This is Isaiah 9 2. The people who walked in darkness, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. 
those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them a light has shined. Powerful illustration. Those who walked in darkness have now seen a great light. We know at Christmas time we have lights. We were not going to put up a whole lot of stuff because I had surgery with my wife's. Anyway, we had complications, A-G-E, A-G-E problems. <laughs> so we were not going to drag down everything from up in the attic about Christmas. We were going to keep it simple, but then we couldn't stand it. We didn't bring out the big tree, but we made sure we put some lights. Because light show up. So we put lights on the house out front. It was still kind of simple, but yet we had to put light. Christmas is about reminding us there is a light. Jesus said this in John 8. This is verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me, he or she who follows me, shall not walk in darkness. That is a powerful, powerful statement. Let it, let it soak through. If you want to walk with Jesus Christ, if you want to follow him, and we should, that's what we're supposed to do as believers. If you follow him, you're not going to walk in darkness. Hallelujah. But it says, I am the light of the world. He or she who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Christmas is a tough time for a lot of families. So wherever you're going this, this coming week or not going, still try to be light and realize when you follow Jesus, you follow his love, you follow his grace, you follow him, you're not going to walk in darkness, but you're going to be a bearer of light. And so light can shine, but we have the light of life. So, oh my goodness, follow Jesus. Don't walk in darkness. Let his light, let his truth, let his love, let his peace, let his hope, let his joy be a part of the light that you dis you display for people to see. Um, I want to give you a quick illustration. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and this is not sad. I don't want this to be sad at all. But our our granddaughter Madeline, uh, she's fourteen. Her dad, our son, passed away three years ago. Um, just that happens to all of us. Many families experience this. But she, and I won't go into the long story, but she wanted to light a candle for her dad in memory of. And so we actually ended up <laughs> last week in the cemetery at dark. And uh, so she lit a candle. And uh, and again, I, I knew I was going to be into preaching about light. I knew Joe and I had preached earlier in the year about I am, I am statements of Jesus. I am the light of the world. So I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures that were pretty cool. Um, there's one right there. It turned out beautiful. And again, it wasn't a sad moment. It was a good moment, and uh, so there she is lighting the candle. I was worried we were going to get arrested being in the cemetery in the middle of the night. I thought the sheriff was going to pull up. We had dogs barking and everything. But anyway, we cut up and laughed some. It turned out to be good. I'm going to show you a couple of other pictures. Um, this is her cousin who brought her down, and uh, you can see here the smiles on their face and the laughters. They're sitting on the bench there uh, where Dave was, and that light up above is shining forth. But anyway... It turned out to be a, a grace-filled time. Again, it wasn't sad. And then the closing one that seen turned out to be beautiful. That's her fixing to blow out and extinguish the candle there at her dad's graveside. So it turned out to be a great moment of joy. But I thought about the illustration of light and how if we follow Jesus, we're not going to walk in darkness. We walk in light. Remind you of that power of that illustration of light this Christmas. So let your light shine. So that people will see you don't walk in darkness if you follow Jesus. Hey, Merry Christmas. God bless you. Let your light shine. Amen. Bye-bye.